This is Marianne Pham. We're here at the 10th Annual Coptic Orthodox Youth Convention in the Northeast Coast of the United States of America. And with us is His Grace Bishop Angelos, General Bishop, uh, serving in the United Kingdom. Hello, Sayedna, and welcome Thank to you, our Lord. annual convention. We're so happy to have you here. It's lovely to be here. 10th um, anniversary is, is a big one, and it's great to be here uh, with all the youth. Thank you. So we understand that it's also your Grace's 10th anniversary of your ordination, and we'd like to, um, I guess, find out a little bit more about you. Yes, um, I, was, I was consecrated uh, by His Holiness and, and the Synod uh, 10 years ago, and uh, it seems to have gone very quickly. Before uh, being consecrated, they had no, what led you to the monastic life? Well, I, I was born in Egypt, uh, and we migrated as a family to Australia. I lived there all of my life and uh, did my studies there and worked. And then I felt a calling to the monastery, and I felt that um, that's really what God wanted me to do. I went back to Egypt to join the monastery. Uh, I went to the monastery of, of St. Bishoy in Wadi Natron. There um, I served as secretary to His Holiness uh, the Pope for six years. In, I was responsible for Sayedna's um, papal, papal residence at the monastery, as well as, as being his disciple for that time. And um, after that, I started serving the United Kingdom as a priest for four years, and then uh, was consecrated a bishop in 1999. Where did you serve when, when you were first uh, consecrated a bishop? Um, I've always been in the same place. So as a priest, I served in, in a parish, which is in Stevenage, north of London. And when I was consecrated, I went back to the same place. It's now my, my headquarters. It's where I work from, where I serve from. We now have a parish priest who looks after the parish side. But in terms of the centre and its activities, that's where it's all run from. Whether it's the um, pastoral activities, the youth activities generally, our ecumenical work, our official work, it's, it all stems from the centre. Sayana, you seem to have a special connection with the youth. Um, tell us a little bit about your service with the youth in, in England. Well, in England, I, I have a, a general capacity for serving the youth, and it, it's lovely. I think it's, it's a very challenging sphere of ministry. Because with the young people these days, and young I mean, when we talk about youth, I think we're talking about uh, from 14 now to about the age of 35. Um, I think it's very challenging because it's a no-nonsense generation. They ask what they want to ask, and you really have to be able to answer their questions. And so you can't fumble your way through things. You need to address issues. And within my own way of ministry, I always try to be as approachable and as close to people as possible. And that also makes it very enjoyable and very satisfying for me. It's um, Besides doing a lot of ecumenical and official work, as much as I love it and I value it, it does become very dry without the personal contact of, of pastoral ministry. So for youth ministry, for instance, in the United Kingdom, because I started there, I still take a lot of confessions. People who confess with me as a priest, who are now confessing with me until today. Um, I still see people regularly for confessions and for, 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 for just catching up and, and, and advice. Um, I still do pastoral visits. We have general youth ministry for all the churches. Um, we have a very diverse youth ministry. We, we, have, we run 10 conferences a year for various age groups and areas, various special interest groups. We have a, 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 an intense sports ministry. We have annual football or soccer, as you would call them, um, tournaments for, for young men and young women. We have a basketball tournament that's about to start. Uh, we have an arts ministry as well. So we have something called the Annual Arts and Film Awards, which is our own Oscars evening. It's a black tie, red carpet event. 
where churches and youth groups make their own movies and we have judging panels and we have uh, nominations for best actor, best actress, best screenplay. We have um, arts awards in terms of paintings, poetry. We've just set up a recording studio because of the a lot of people are very talented musically. So it's great that it gives us a very diverse way of serving youth in lots of different areas. Well, it sounds like you're really tapping into all the different types of talents that are, um, I guess, atypical of what we, we generally think of. Um, but what are, the, what are the major challenges that you face with the youth of England or those that you primarily serve? I think youth everywhere are, are relatively the same. I, although geographically, um, you will have different places, even the United States, the East Coast very different, the West Coast very different, Midwest or South. Canada, you have Montreal, is very different to Toronto. So even besides those demographic differences, I think intrinsically our youth are all very much the same. And the challenges we face, uh, we, we face are their own challenges, trying to serve them in a way, in a world that's very fast. So life is changing daily. And if as a church we can't keep up with the youth and keep up with they, what they need, what they want, then it's really going to be outdated. Um, to a certain extent, we are service providers. We, we have to compete for their interests. We have to compete for their attention. And if we're not doing that productively, we will lose out. And other elements will catch their attention, catch their interest. So we've got to be aware of the fact that we have to attract them. And what's also got to be very clear in our minds is regardless of what sort of ministry we have, whether it's arts, sports, the word, any other ministry, it has to be Christ-focused. So, in anything we do, we draw them towards a godly uh, experience. So, for instance, you could have a sports tournament and it become very competitive and it become quite counterproductive. But within, within our own uh, sports ministry, what we try to do is to build a unity between the churches and bring them together. Sure, they have to be competitive and have to enjoy themselves, but in a healthy way. So the challenges are constantly finding ways of making their lives livable as Christian men and women. So that we're not just giving them theory, we're giving them something that can be lived on a daily, daily basis. So in your vast travels, it, it's just something that you've come to realize is similar, that the challenges are similar regardless of geographical location. It's, are you saying that it's kind of just our, our nature as human beings, that these are our, these are our challenge, that's challenges in the world today that we're facing? I think um, in one aspect that it is uh, innately within us to seek God and to face these challenges. But also as a Coptic church, I think we're very, we should be very thankful that our church is pastorally very dynamic. So people are served from a very young age. Through, through the, um, I think, the, 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 the huge work um, of His Holiness Pope Shindu III, um, since being a layman, Nazir Gayed, and the Sunday School Movement, and his encouragement and his inspiration, We've put a lot of effort as a church into te teaching and serving um, children, young adults, youth, and so that in itself shapes character. And so I think what makes the experience very similar even across all of these continents is that the church in its direction has become one. And so therefore it's it's, it's very tangible to people. So it's, it's, it's a great blessing to, to serve the youth as one of um, the youth leaders in, in our churches here. And I see that um, some of the things that your grace is doing, um, we'd like also to adopt. But, and we've seen the service, I guess growing up here, we've seen the service grow so much in the last 
10, 15, 20 years from when we were kids, when our parents first immigrated and started a church, where do you, th where, where do you see us going, I guess, in the next 10 years of service or in the next 20 years as we build another generation of youth here in, in, in the States or in the lands of immigration even because England is also a land of immigration. So um, w what do you see happening in the next 10 years? I personally think the next 10 years are going to be very challenging um, because the world is changing so quickly now and morality and ethics are changing, lifestyles are changing and whereas up till now young people have had some sort of connection to their original ancestry so whether it's first century, second century, uh, f sorry first generation, second generation, third generation as time goes on, you're going to have people who may have no connection at all. In a world that is changing, and a world is challenging everything they believe in and everything they are, as a church we're going to face very real challenges. Um, and that is, how do we keep our essential Christian Orthodox Coptic identity, and I, and I mean to say it in that order, First we are Christians, then we're Orthodox, then we're Coptic. So to be able to maintain that identity, along with speaking a language that people understand. And I don't mean a verbal language, I mean speak to their hearts, be able to engage them, be able to help them still live a godly life. It's going to be very challenging because even if you take the Christian component out of it, if you're just talking about day-to-day -day morality and ethics, it's becoming more and more challenging. So to add e extra characteristics and parameters to that uh, does, does become quite difficult. I do think it's going to be a gradual process. I do think that we are going to have to look at it very sensitively and sympathetically and I think you already see it in our churches that ministry is, is dynamic, the church is dynamic and the ministry keeps changing. We have certain things that are given and that do not change. Our dogma, our theology, our sacramental life, they don't change. You want access to 500 channels, you press one button. What suggestions do you have in terms of motivating the youth to take the next step? Their Christian life is not an optional extra.